Splatoon all this time later, and honestly, it's still a really good way to burn some time. So what if we just tried to take Splatoon, but make it worse? I mean, hey, you've had like four years to have a good time. So what if Nintendo just went and made us want to have a bad time? <laughs> Here's five silly but simple ways that I think the development team could really ruin Splatoon if they wanted to. In an effort to force people to think before they act, Nintendo just, you know, randomly decides to change how long it takes for you to respawn. Currently, the amount of respawn time is somewhere around six seconds long. So what if instead, you had a random chance of it taking somewhere between two and 10 seconds instead? All the options can happen at the same percent chance. So one time you respawn, you might come back almost instantly. While the next time, you get to sit there for 10 seconds while the enemy team takes your precious Rainmaker and runs it three quarters across the map while you just sit there, head in hands, wondering, what did you do to deserve this? Can you imagine the kinds of, like, salty comments players would get during matches? Ah, I would've won if I respawned faster, or... <laughs> I mean, the only reason that Kenzo Splattershot was able to wipe my team was because they super jumped back in so fast. Would you be willing to gamble your in-game time for the chance of getting back to base quickly when finding a safe space to super jump would just, like, take too long? After all, getting splatted in 3 or 4 seconds is probably quicker than running all the way to the water when you're being chased around by two foes at the same time. Okay, okay, N enough of that. How else could we ruin Splatoon? How about number four? Surprise! Nintendo adds another kit to the game for your favorite weapon. However, Nintendo also added the same new kit for every weapon, for extra fun. <laughs> Maybe this bonus kit changes every day or every week or something. You don't have to rebuy it, even though it would be a great way to waste some of those coins that you know you have sitting around. But how about we just, you know, for one week, Everything has Burst Bomb and Booyah Bomb as an extra kit. You go into solo queue, and oops, it's tower control, and oops, everyone has Booyah Bomb. Wouldn't that be fun? Do you think, like, in a week where a number of weapons all have Booyah Bomb, you'd see a larger number of people on Object Shredder? Imagine a week where everybody has a Stingray at their disposal. Like, the old kits still exist during this. It's just that there's a bonus kit, whether that's a third kit or a fourth kit, depending on the weapon itself, that just, you know, is the same for everybody. I think, I think you know, all backlines would celebrate if everybody had a Burst Bomb Stingray kit like C-Jet. <laughs> and I think it'd be funny is uh, if that kit already exists for the weapon, the third kit just still exists anyway, so you just kind of have to be careful not to, you know, use the wrong one and get your points wasted on the wrong one. Oh, oh, and here's a kicker to make it even more annoying. What if they didn't even make a brand new kit design? Like, it just is the vanilla kit, but it has, you know, not the vanilla kit. So when you load up into a game of Turf War and you see that regular slosher on the other team, you have to think for a moment, hmm, do they have the kit or not? Maybe there's like a singular sparkle <laughs> at the start of the match just to like remember. That'd be gross. I love it. All right, how about a different way to ruin the game? What if instead we just locked players into a single weapon for a whole rotation? <laughs> Once you start playing ranked or turf, you just gotta stick to that weapon for the rest of the two hours. Maybe there's a catch. Maybe it's so you can be separately compared and ranked against players using the same weapon during that session. It'd be a great way to improve the Nintendo Switch app, since right now, you know, while it does do a few things like tell you the map mode combinations, let you see things comparatively when you're in X rank and in top 500, that's about what most people use the app for. While this isn't the worst trade-off in the world, I could imagine it would be significantly annoying for people to have to play the same thing for two hours straight. Like, imagine a person who accidentally picks the wrong kit <laughs> of their weapon. Like, maybe you meant to play Kensa Jr., but oh no, you picked the Custom Jr., and now you're stuck with Auto Bomb and Rain for the next two hours on your Jr., and you just get to do nothing about it. Nice! 
maybe there could be some caveat. Like, you get to pick one weapon for ranked, uh, one weapon for turf, and then one weapon for league. That way you can have three options, but otherwise you do have to stick to those just until the rotation changes. Do you think some people, if they only have a limited amount of time to play in a day, would be like, okay, how about I just start playing the game 30 minutes before the rotation changes? That way, I can play in two different modes of ranked, and I get to use up the six different weapons overall. That could be the hack. But hey, what if we made it worse? What if instead of locking your player to a specific weapon for a couple of hours, we locked your character to a specific style of play forever? <laughs> now, I feel like most people who watch my videos probably know how RPGs work, but just in case, Let's say that we give your Splatoon character a class that they can't break out of. When you start playing Splatoon, you have to select a character. You get to give them a name, assign stats. Yeah, you heard me, stats. Like a skill tree. And no, just like any scary RPG game, you can't go back and change those stats later. So if you decide you don't like them, Ah, uh, too bad. You're gonna have to make an entirely new OC. Hopefully you build properly for your Charger class player. Or you're gonna have to start all over with a brand new Inkling. Or Octoling. Maybe the single player mode could even call you by name if you could assign yourself a name before you started. But I could only imagine what would happen if you decided you wanted to try to experiment outside of your class. Imagine a Charger-oriented Inkling trying to suddenly play Roller. Could you imagine going into Turf War, you have two roller players on your team? One of the players is set up properly, one of them isn't, and it's just like, so obvious which one is the good player? Maybe in a setup like this, instead of having gear denoting your boosted abilities, it would be based entirely on your predetermined skill tree that you could max out maybe like at level 50 or something. But the worst thing that I think the Splatoon developers could do, whether it goes into Splatoon 1, Splatoon 2, or <laughs> hopefully not Splatoon 3, is what if they turn Splatoon into a gachapon? Instead of you only having a choice of, you know, certain weapons to pick from and paying for them over time like you do in this game, what if you had to earn them by chance? You walk your way into Sheldon's shop, he gives you a smile, you can give him some of your sea snails, you know, because you probably have a whole ton of those from Splatfest and you can't do anything with them. Or, you know, maybe some of that money. Look at all the money that maybe you have from playing too much Turf War for the last four years and you don't have anything to do with it because you bought all the stuff in the game. And then you go up to Sheldon and he just takes that money from you. And he just gives you a weapon. But here's the catch. The weapons are randomized. You don't get to pick which weapon you're getting. And even worse, some of the weapons just come and go. Any kind of gross gachapon game, after all, has, you know, banners for characters, but in this case it's weapons. <laughs> They're gonna Genshin Impact your Splatoon. They're gonna Love Live your Splatoon. They're gonna Pokemon Masters. EX, <laughs> your Splatoon, I don't know, other Gachapon games that you'll still play. Imagine if the Kensa set was only available for like a month every half a year. That'd increase the rarity of the freaking Kensa 52 gal pretty quick. Imagine playing the game for maybe like a month or two and seeing a really cool weapon and being like, I hope I can get that one. And then whoops, looks like it was just in the gacha a couple of months before you started playing. Better get used to not playing that one. <laughs> of course, I couldn't see Nintendo actually making us pay for currency to get weapons, so maybe it would just cost a lot. Like, maybe more than one snail, or maybe a stupid amount of money. If you really want to get rid of some of that cash, why not make it like 100,000 coins, or even like 500,000 coins? Something just stupid enough that it forces people to play the game a lot. I'd hate that. You'd hate that. And I'm sure there are lots of other ways you could just go and ruin Splatoon. Imagine if Nintendo kept the game exactly the same, but just, you know, took away gear abilities for simplicity. That'd be a nightmare. And it would also take a lot of the punch away from bamboozlers, rollers, duelies, and more. Do you have any ideas or ways that you could ruin the game? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. 
While putting this video together, I had more ways to ruin the game, and it's really tempting to put together a part two. But if you guys have better ideas, I could always highlight those instead, and maybe expand upon them. <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing so you can catch more Splatoon and Nintendo content from me in the future. Now that I've shilled my own channel though, I'm gonna go now. Bye bye!